Jaguars undrafted rookie and largely undrafted fantasy asset James Robinson ended up being the player most highly owned on fantasy playoff rosters this season. What happened in week 15? He exited the game with an injury, leaving a lot of likely playoff teams in limbo. That's why we're here to help. Don't panic because if you're watching this, it also means that you made it to your fantasy championship. Congratulations. Now let's get into fixing that roster. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Week 16 and Fantasy Championship edition of the Radio.com Sports Fantasy Football Show. My name is Jordan Cohn, and as always, I am joined by my fellow staff writer, Jesse Pantusco. You'll note that our usual co-host, Stephen Andrus, is not here this week, nor was he here last week. That is because he is on paternity leave. A well-deserved congratulations to Stephen Andrus and the rest of the Andrus family. And congratulations to Stephen for making it to the RDC Sports Fantasy Championship. A little bit of paternity leave wasn't going to deter him from going all the way to the ship. As usual, we will go over our waiver wire pickups, our stream team, and our stealth starts for week 16. And we're going to get started with the waiver wire as usual. My first suggestion here is Savone Ahmed of the Miami Dolphins. Uh, and he's been a waiver wire friend of ours for a little while this season. He returned from a three-week absence in week 15, went off for 127 total yards and a touchdown against the Patriots. There's one key little factoid to monitor here, and that's the status of fellow running back Miles Gaskin. He's missed the past two weeks on the COVID-19 reserve list. He might come back in week 16. However, that's probably not something that we're going to know uh, before too late this week. And so when the waiver moves need to be submitted on Wednesday morning, I think Ahmed is something that, or someone that you should jump on right away. Uh, all the fab you've got, you should give it to Ahmed. He just torched the Patriots defense, posted top 10 numbers at his position. He'll face an even more torchable defense in week 16 in the Las Vegas Raiders. Jesse, you've got another running back to help out those James Robinson owners. So here's a pretty shocking stat for you. Tony Pollard scored more PPR points Sunday than Ezekiel Elliott has in any game this season. Pollard wasn't particularly efficient against the Niners in Week 15. If you take away his 40-yard touchdown run, he averaged under three yards per carry. But how about the fact that he had a 40-yard run in the first place? For comparison's sake, Elliott hasn't had a 40-yard run in over two years. Pollard's explosiveness is part of what makes him such an enticing play whenever Zeke is out. And we haven't even gotten to the best part. Because he's an excellent receiver, Pollard is virtually unaffected by game script, which means even if the Cowboys fall behind, his involvement shouldn't change. In fact, Pollard led Dallas in both catches and targets against San Francisco. We'll see if Elliott, who's nursing a calf injury, is able to get the green light for Week 16. The Cowboys still have a pulse in the NFC East, and Zeke is nearing 1,000 yards rushing for the season, so there is some incentive for him to play. But if he can't go, Pollard, who is owned in just 45% of Yahoo leagues, would be a must-start against the Eagles. Ahmed and Pollard, two top running back options on the waiver wire. Now let's give the wide receiver position a little bit of love, and I'm going to go with another frequent name on this segment of the show, Russell Gage of the Atlanta Falcons. Over the past five weeks, Gage has averaged over eight targets per game for Matt Ryan, in large part due to the fact that Julio Jones has been sidelined for most of that stint. And there's a very real chance that that pattern continues in week 16. Julio says he wants to get back on the field. They're going to give him an injection to make that possible. But that's likely to be a decision made much later in the week. And the Falcons don't really have much to play for, not really much to risk Julio's health over. What the team will do for sure in Week 16 is throw the ball a lot. They are playing against the Kansas City Chiefs, a high octane offense to keep up with, and that puts Gage in a great position for a lot of work. He's sneakily been the number nine wide receiver in all of fantasy football over the past three weeks. He's still only 24% owned. You should jump on that right away if you need help at the wide receiver position. Now let's get into our stream team where we go over quarterbacks, tight ends, and defenses owned in fewer than 50% of leagues that you can plug and play for the championship. Jesse, start us off with a position that has been largely tough to deal with this season for the stream team. Yeah, I'll, I'll miss these videos, but not the part about picking a tight end every week. Well, I don't love our options this week, big surprise. But I think you could make the case for Austin Hooper as a serviceable streamer against the Jets, who have allowed the most fantasy points to opposing tight ends this season. The Jets, who, in a hilarious twist of fate, sabotage their chances of grappling Trevor Lawrence by beating the Rams Sunday, have been a disaster against tight ends. In the last three weeks, they've allowed 67 yards and a touchdown to Tyler Hickey, a touchdown to Will Disley, and, wait for it, 13 catches for 200 yards and two touchdowns to Darren Waller. 
Cooper's debut season in Cleveland hasn't been anything to write home about. The season high in yards is just 57. But he's turning in the right direction with a touchdown in two of his last three games. Cooper has only faced the Jets one other time in his career. Did he score in that game? You bet. If you're really strapped at tight end, I think Hooper is the way to go this week. Austin Hooper, again, never a tough or never an easy decision there, but Hooper seems like a good option. I agree with you there. Meanwhile, I get to stream a quarterback, and I think I have the easiest stream team decision in the history of fantasy football, and that is Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts going off against the Dallas Cowboys in week 16. Uh, Hurts exploded for 38 points uh, in week 15. He went for four total touchdowns, along with 338 yards through the air, 64 on the ground. Again, he gets the Cowboys in week 16. He was our stream team recommendation last week. I hope you listened. Courtesy to Jesse for that good pick. And at the end of that segment, I advised you to plan to hold on to him after this week. This is the reason why. He's still only 39% owned, though. Way up from last week. Still likely on the waivers in a good portion of leagues. You're lucky if yours is one of those. And the Cowboys defense, uh, their second most points surrendered in the league. They've allowed over 30 in three of their past four contests. The lone exception was the feeble attack of the Joe Burrow's Bengals. So you should fire up Hurts with certainty as the Eagles are still scraping along in the NFC East, looking for a playoff spot, if not by a miracle. Uh, go out and grab him without hesitation. Plug him in for your championship. Jesse, you have the defense pick of the week as well. Well, if you, brave soul, have the stones to stream a fantasy defense in the championship, why not make it the Los Angeles Chargers? Even with studs like Joey Bosa and Chris Harris, the Bolts have largely underwhelmed in fantasy this year, but they catch a good matchup against Denver in Week 16. Protecting the Rock has never been Drew Locke's strong suit. The Broncos quarterback has committed a turnover in every game he's played this season, totaling 16 combined turnovers. That's 13 interceptions and three lost fumbles in his 11 starts. Locke had a relatively clean game, just one pick, when these teams met earlier this year, but the Chargers have improved since then. During their two-game winning streak, Los Angeles has forced four tur turnovers, all of them coming on interceptions. Playing at home against a turnover-prone quarterback they've already seen this year, the Chargers are precisely what I look for in a fantasy streamer. I like it. Chargers defense there with the streaming pick. And now we will go on to the last segment of the show, the stealthy starts. And you might think for a fantasy championship roster that the starters are set in stone, but you might be in the championship because you had a lot of depth. You have a lot of usable pieces week in and week out. So this segment could be as important as ever. Jesse, start us off with your first pick. Well, with Michael Thomas out for the remainder of the regular season, real glad I drafted him in the first round. Emmanuel Sanders is the last man standing in New Orleans. And he looked the part Sunday, contributing a team high 76 receiving yards in the loss to Kansas City. Sanders, like most of the Saints pass catchers, was quiet during Taysom Hill's four weeks in his starter. But with Drew Brees back in the saddle, Sanders looked invigorated Sunday, going for his most yards since week five. The Saints host Minnesota in a rare Friday game this week. It's about the best matchup possible for Sanders. The Vikings have allowed more fantasy points to opposing wide receivers than any team in football this year. Coming off back-to-back -back losses, I think we'll see a highly motivated Saints team on Christmas Day, and the Saints could be collateral damage. I like it, and nothing better than watching some fantasy football action on Christmas Day. Manuel Sanders, the first pick there. I'm also going to go with a wide receiver for my stealthy start, and that will be Devontae Parker of the Miami Dolphins going up against the Las Vegas Raiders. The Dolphins are in must-win territory. They currently sit in the playoff race at 9-5. and five. They want to keep the ball rolling. They have a sneakily tough matchup against the Raiders in Week 16. Sneaky not because of the team's defense, though. We know that they're a bottom five unit in the league. They haven't been very good against wide receivers. They're actually bottom 10 against receivers in terms of fantasy points against. But the Raiders have pulled off difficult wins over the Saints, Chiefs, and other opponents en route to their 7-7 seven and seven record. So I think that with the Dolphins gunning for an all-important victory and the Raiders never going to back down, this one could have shootout potential. Uh, and for Parker, pregame reports in Week 15 indicated that he could play. They seemed pretty optimistic that he would suit up. He ended up not doing that. Uh, but that's a good sign that in Week 16 he should be raring to go and he could be someone that you start and gets a lot of action against the Raiders with Tua probably having to throw the ball a good amount. Jesse, final pick. Well, Clyde Edwards-Alaire suffered a nasty-looking leg injury Sunday, and though his x-rays came back negative, I wouldn't anticipate him suiting up against the Falcons in Week 16. That opens the door for Le'Veon Bell, who rushed for a season-high 62 yards Sunday against New Orleans. Bell isn't the dominant force he was early in his career, but he has a clear path to the goal line work and should see volumes similar to Edwards-Alaire, who's averaging a hair under 17 touches per game. 
Though Bell averaged only 3.2 yards per carry as the Jets' workhorse in 2019, he was very effective as a receiver, snagging 66 catches out of the Jets' backfield. Bell doesn't have an especially good matchup this week against the Falcons, who've allowed the fifth fewest fantasy points to opposing running backs, but he's still good back for 10 to 15 carries, a handful of catches, and probably a goal line touchdown or two. If you've been stashing Bell on your bench, holding him as insurance for Edwards Allaire, this will be the week your patience finally pays off. That'll do it for the week 16 edition of the Radio.com Sports Fantasy Football Show. We hope we have prepared you well for your fantasy football championship matchup in week 16. As usual, any questions, please drop a comment. We will be happy to answer and help you out as much as possible in making the right picks. For Jesse Pantusco and Steven Andrus, I'm Jordan Cohn. Best of luck in the championship.